So we're going to have a look at pandemics um, and effectively then market crashes. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say we're in a full-blown market crash at the moment, uh, but we have seen uh, quite a considerable amount of equity losses here to date. Uh, and as a result, it's important to have a look at what happens when markets lose value uh, and the potential recovery thereafter. Uh, a lot of investors um, will look at their own investments, whether it be a small emergency account or some form of savings vehicle. But when markets start to lose value, um, that can often trigger a lot of emotional reactions. Um, but it's important to recognize that with all market crashes, there is subsequently a recovery. Uh, and how do you as investors gain access to that recovery? Uh, and then, as I said lastly, just a number of opportunities um, from a discovery perspective that can effectively assist you um, as clients. So just to jump straight into the presentation, I can imagine at this point in time, many of you have been absolutely bombarded with content in regards to pandemics and COVID-19. Uh, I mean, these days it's very difficult to turn on the news uh, and not listen to something regarding COVID-19. Um, but effectively, just to summarize, you know, COVID-19 is a global pandemic. Um, it is now, I mean, if you have a look at um, new infections worldwide, sitting in excess, I think, of about 7 million, um, and the death count continues to rise. Uh, and it has effectively sent shockwaves through global markets, uh, and many suggesting that a pandemic of this nature uh, was last seen during 1918 during the dreadful Spanish flu. Um, so I think the difficulty with dealing with a pandemic like this, um, and not to touch on any of the medical medical terminology, et cetera, but to have a look at the actual reaction to the pandemic, is in most cases, you know, there's not a lot of people alive who have ever had to deal with, dealt with a pandemic like this. So in most cases, you know, we, we're learning on, on, on the fly, if you want to call it that, we're adopting best practice as opposed to recognized practices. Uh, in, in, essence, in essence, it's been a massive learning curve um, for the entire world. Um, but this isn't the first time, as I said, that global pandemics have taken place. If you have a look at the history of pandemics, and these slides are only quite slightly outdated if you look at the COVID-19 numbers. Um, just an illustration, if you look at the, the graphic on the left uh, of your screens at this point, you know that global pandemics have been a, a thing that have existed throughout history. And this has been far from the biggest global pandemic. Uh, and on top of that, if you look at your, if you look at the screen to the right or the graphic on the right, just an illustration that from a death perspective, um, still one of the smaller um, global pandemics that we have seen. Uh, so just a bit of information uh, to illustrate to individuals or yourselves as clients that this is the first pandemic we've seen. Um, an important point to make is it's arguably definitely not going to be the last pandemic we see. Whether, whether or not we as individuals see another pandemic in our lifetime, uh, remains to be seen, uh, but in terms of the world, uh, definitely not the last global pandemic. Now, as I say, my job as an investment specialist is to not necessarily provide info or, or recommendations from a health perspective, uh, but very importantly to understand the economic impact. Uh, and the economic impact of coronavirus has been quick and severe. Um, so, I mean, if you look at yourself as an individual or family going back to work at this moment, the probability of you catching the coronavirus is real, but largely remote. However, if you look at humanity as a whole, the actual economic impact uh, or the shock waves of the economic impacts are going to be felt throughout global markets. Um, and that's something that we, we really need to take into consideration. You know, um, while we've all spent a lot of time over the last kind of month, two months, in terms of prepping our own home environments from a work perspective, uh, whether it's been minimizing our travel outside of our homes, um, the economic impacts of this global um, pandemic is, 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 has been felt to a large extent, um, but it's still going to have an impact. Uh, what you're reading in the news at the moment is a lot of large companies and the subsequent impacts, but we still yet to see a lot of the smaller companies and the potential impact there. Uh, to give you an indication of the level of volatility or uncertainty that COVID-19 threw into our markets um, in early March, uh, which is arguably the back end of where the market bottomed out, um, a VIX index, which is a measure of volatility within the markets or a measure of uncertainty in the markets, um, hit 82.69 out of 100. That's the highest level it's ever hit. Um, so you can see in a very, very small space of time, um, a lot of uncertainty thrown into the markets. Uh, what happened subsequently 
uh, is markets lost a significant amount of their value. Um, and I'm not talking, you know, and there's been a, a decent recovery off the back of that, and I'll touch on that just now. But just to have a look at markets in general, now we're looking at the biggest market in the world, the US market. Uh, you can see effectively across all major indices, about the second week of Feb, year to date, some of your major stock indices, I mean, S&P 500, New York Stock Exchange, all recognized um, financial markets, losing in excess of 30%. Um, so a third of the value of that market was lost um, in the space of effectively two to three weeks. Um, that's a very, very quick time for markets to lose value. Uh, and what that ultimately translated uh, for, 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 for you guys as investors, um, if you are exposed to equity, uh, seeing quite a considerable drop in value. Now, as I said, it happened very quickly, uh, which means asset managers, and this was across the world, basically, not even limited to South Africa, had very little time to react. So, I mean, if you look at the graphic on screen over here, uh, it starts on the 1st of Jan 2020 this year, just having a look at market values rebased um, to 100. So you can see if we measure performance off that base of 100, uh, market started off at 0%, so no growth at the beginning of Jan. Uh, kind of prodded along as we started to absorb the news of COVID-19, information coming out of Wuhan in terms uh, of the virus spreading. Uh, and then you can see effectively here, the minute the first deaths um, outside of, of, of China started to take place, I think that's really where the world realized the problem that they had on hand. Uh, and the markets didn't take that positively. And you can see effectively from about late Feb, uh, markets really dropped off. There was about three days in particular, in the New York Stock Exchange, for example, where trading had, where trading had to be halted uh, for a minimum period of 15 minutes, given prices dropped so rapidly. Uh, so just an indication to you in terms of what happened when the virus hit and the subsequent economic impact. Now, the good news is what I'm showing you on the screen right now is the bottom of the market. Um, so you'll see here, this was towards about the back end of Feb. Since then, Markets have actually recovered quite nicely. Uh, we've seen quite a quite a consistent recovery. Whether or not that recovery is permanent, time will tell. Um, but effectively, if you look at markets losing roughly around 30% of their value year to date, uh, at current points, markets are probably down anywhere between negative five to 10%. So in terms of total loss year to date, about 60 to 70% of that loss has already been recovered um, and markets are still trending upwards. Um, but in just to manage expectations from a, from a market perspective, you know, the virus is still, well, the outcome of the virus is still largely unknown. And that remains a key point of concern for anyone, uh, for all the asset managers or for anyone for that matter, uh, for, that, for that perspective. Um, you know, we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, we don't even know what level two lockdown looks for us here in South Africa. Um, so very difficult to determine what the outcome of this virus is going to be. Uh, and ultimately where markets are going to be two, three months from now. Um, that being said, um, markets have recovered uh, quite a substantial piece of their loss. Uh, and again, it speaks to investment best practice. So earlier on, I highlighted um, that, you know, when markets drop like this, investors, and it's myself included, um, you know, it can trigger emotional reactions. No one wants to see the, the hard work money that they've earned um, losing values. And what would often happen at a point like this when markets started bottoming out uh, is investors are effectively fed up. Um, and it's not necessarily thrown in the towel, um, but they move out of equity. So they move into, for example, a much more conservative asset class like cash or bonds in order to circumvent any further losses. But what happens then is when markets rebound like they have over the course of the last month and a half, when you switch out of your equity investment, um, when markets are, are, are negative, uh, it foregoes the opportunity that you have to enjoy when markets recover. Uh, so for any of you on this call, whether or not you hold investments with discovery or just in your personal capacity, if you have seen your investment drop in value given exposure to equities, uh, I strongly encourage you to stay invested. It's the most difficult piece of advice to provide because it ultimately translates into you as clients doing nothing. Um, but very important at this point in time not to sell out of your equity positions. Um, markets will eventually recover. And when they do, you want to enjoy that upside uh, when it occurs. And to illustrate that a little bit further, 
Um, what I've done is I've had a look again at the US market, um, which by the way, largely reflects movements in the South African market from a recovery perspective. And as you can see on this graph here, what we've done is we've gone and recognized right from October 29, 1973, we've gone and identified uh, a number of black swan events. And, and COVID-19 can be considered a black swan event. Uh, very simply put, a black swan event is an unknown event with unknown economic consequences. Uh, and that's exactly what COVID-19 is. No one saw that the glo a global pandemic occur occurring. Uh, and as a result, no one understood what the potential economic impact would have been. Um, but the good news, if you have a look at this graph here, it illustrates you know, a number of um, key financial events. If we go back to one which is arguably more um, familiar with all of us, the global financial crisis of 2008-09. And you can see, I mean, here during the global financial crisis, markets lost 56%. Um, of their value. So huge economic losses for clients. Um, but the good news is, again, is when black swan events occur, negative market movement happens. Generally speaking, there afterwards, and in every example, if we look back in history, markets have not only recovered those losses, um, they've then proceeded to provide massive amounts of value uh, to those investors. So you can imagine, here's a normal example, markets start to be investor starts feeling it emotionally at this point here and sells out of his position or her position uh, and then effectively misses this entire gain which occurs thereafter. Uh, so as I say, even though we are during a period of financial uncertainty or we have, are in a period where equity markets have dropped off, um, very important to stay invested. Unless you physically require capital in the form of an emergency, um, you know, you might have seen a drop in your income, you might have undergone a retrenchment, and you may require emergency capital. If you don't require emergency capital, best advice at this point in time uh, is to stay invested uh, and allow markets time to recover. In a number of months or years, COVID-19 will be a thing of the past. Uh, at that point in time, market fundamentals will return uh, and investors can continue to expect um, the best returns out of the equity market. Uh, so again, just a little bit of background in terms of, this isn't the first time we've seen equity markets drop off. Uh, it's definitely not the last time we're gonna see a black swan event. Um, so it's important to make sure that if you are gonna be making any investment decisions um, during this period, speak to your financial advisor, uh, speak to the likes of Shirley, uh, and just make sure that you understand what your current action means for your long-term investment objective. Very, very important to understand that. Um, and then lastly, from a market perspective, a lot of you might be sitting on this call right now and saying, you know, Mark, this all sounds very bad. This is not the right time to be investing in the, in the market. Um, for your reoccurring investments, for, for example, um, you actually add considerable value to investment when you invest during periods um, such as this. Uh, so what we've done over here is we've just highlighted for you that if you have a look at a reoccurring investment, and for example, if you look at your own retirement planning, uh, whether you're planning by your work in the form of a pension provident fund, if you're lucky enough, or whether you have to do your planning in your own personal capacity with the help of a financial advisor like Shirley, um, now is a fantastic opportunity for you to start a reoccurring investment or alternatively continue your reoccurring investment. So what we've done here is just have a look at the right of the, of the information here. You can see that a reoccurring investment really has two components that contribute to growth. Now, the component that most people are always focused on is the actual unit price. And by that, most investors want to see that unit price increasing. Uh, the more it increases, the more value they've added to the investment. But for a reoccurring investment, the number of units you purchase on a monthly basis is also very, very important. Um, so during bull markets, the value of your unit price increases. And that's what a lot of investors are only focused on. They only want to see markets going up and the value of their investment increasing. But for reoccurring investors, during bear markets, very similar to the environment we find ourselves in right now, you're actually purchasing more units on a monthly basis than you would in a bull market. So for your long-term investment, like a retirement investment, continuing investing or starting your investment during volatile periods like we find ourselves now could actually potentially add huge value to your investment when markets recover. So what we've done, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, is again, we've gone back to a period that is probably slightly more familiar 
uh, for you as an individual. And we've had a look at the financial crisis 2007, 2008. Now we've measured the period from 2007 right through to 2015. Uh, and what we've done is we've looked at a reoccurring investor uh, who opened up an investment over this period. Now your bear market, in other words, where prices were decreasing occurred between 2007 to 2011. Uh, and you can see that represented by the top left graph over there. The gold line on that graph represents what linear growth would look like. In other words, what it would look like if growth, if growth occurred in a straight line. Now, any of you on this call who have seen the likes of an equity um, or a share price move, it definitely doesn't move in a straight line. Uh, it moves up and down uh, all the time. And that's where the skill of an asset manager comes to the forefront in being able to um, buy and sell those shares at the right time. Uh, if you look at a bull market, for example, we measured from 2011 to 2015. And again, gold line represents what growth would look like in a straight line. Uh, and the blue line there representing um, one of our discovery funds, our discovery balance fund, which is arguably our most popular fund from a retirement planning perspective. Um, and there what we've done is we've actually measured the unit price um, over that period. Uh, at the bottom of the graph over here, very interestingly, we said in an environment where growth occurred in a straight line, so there was absolutely no volatility. In other words, from policy inception right up to policy maturity, markets just grew in a steady um, upward trending line. Uh, the number of units you would have purchased over that period is represented by the goal. Um, however, for an investor that invests in both a bad market, very similar to what we see now, as well as the good market, in other words, the potential recovery that can take place off the back of COVID-19. If you look at the bottom over there, um, the blue line there represents the additional units that investor was able to purchase, which ultimately translated into a higher fund value at maturity. Because you can see, if you look at the bear market over here, if that blue line there represents the unit price that you are effectively buying into your investment on a monthly basis. So if you're investing a thousand rand and the unit price starts at a hundred, First month, you're going to get 10 units. Have a look what goes, what happens when you start seeing that unit price drop. So this is exactly where we are now. Markets have dropped off, equity markets have lost value, and we see the unit price decreasing. And you can see here, for example, during this period, your monthly contribution of 1,000 Rand bought you more units than if a market moved in a straight line. Because if a market moved in a straight line, you can see already here by the end of this period, you were purchasing roughly four units less on a monthly basis than if you were exposed to a volatile market. So the key takeout from this slide here is really, um, even though markets have turned down somewhat or slightly, um, you shouldn't be stopping your reoccurring investments. And for those of you who are looking to start planning for retirement uh, or opening up new retirement vehicles, now is actually a fantastic time uh, to do so because there really is a good opportunity to work on the number of units, unit accumulation, when markets recover off the back of COVID-19, your attention then turns to unit price and making sure that as markets increase, you're effectively selling out at the right period uh, or the appropriate time. And that's exactly where partnering with the financial advisor adds value. Um, for many of you on this call, you know, your primary focus or your career is on geared towards investments. Um, you may be in a completely different industry, the, the, the power or the importance of retirement planning, however, still remains true for everyone on this call. So it's important to make sure if you're not 100% comfortable with markets, um, that you leave it up to, for example, a financial advisor like Shirley, um, who will monitor the markets uh, and make sure that when you buy into the investment, more importantly, when you exit your investment, uh, you're doing so at the correct time. So that's it from a market perspective. Uh, as I said, I haven't looked at the chat uh, yet, so there may be a couple of questions. If there are, we'll get to them towards the end. Um, and I just wanted to paint a picture to you in terms of where we are in the market. So we know that COVID-19 has hit now. Uh, it has had a massive uh, impact, not just in terms of our way of life, uh, but a negative impact from a market perspective. Uh, the good news is since we bottomed out roughly towards the second week of March, uh, we have seen the market recover uh, a substantial portion of the loss incurred year to date. Um, we still are down year to date, um, but the good news is markets are track, uh, trending upward, um, which bodes well for any of you who have suffered losses, but more importantly, have stayed invested. Um, the next component of the presentation now 
uh, in recognition that everyone on this call uh, needs to plan for their retirement, uh, is to have a look at the retirement solutions we can provide you here at Discovery uh, and how we can tailor that retirement solution um, to speak to your specific needs. Um, so just to give you some background and, and, and the background regarding um, shared value is effectively um, the differentiator. Why, why or how we as Discovery uh, differentiate ourselves relative to anyone else out there in the market. Uh, and right from the beginning, whether you look at our invest product suite, whether you look at our health product suite, uh, whether you look at our life or short-term insurance product suite, uh, it all looks to change behavior positively. Uh, and if we can do that successfully, uh, not only does it have value benefits for the clients in terms of literally physical improved health uh, or better saving outcomes, uh, from a company perspective, uh, improved health, health bodes well for us, uh, less claims or financial commitments uh, from a health perspective, uh, and that translates into a healthier society um, with better savings outcomes. So our shared value model really looks to incorporate behavioral finance and maximize its benefits, not just for you as the client or for us as Discovery Invest, um, but society as a whole. And if we can get that right, uh, if we can get the behavioral dynamics um, of a product right, um, you as a client will really start to learn or understand how to maximize the value proposition of that product, uh, which really has intrinsic benefits in your own life as well. Uh, so that was just a painted picture of the importance of behavioral finance uh, and how it effectively underpins everything we do uh, at Discovery uh, and for this presentation, Discovery Invest in, uh, in particular. So if we look at the retirement landscape in South Africa, we've identified really three key areas or challenges facing the retirement landscape. Uh, and what we've done is we've looked to address those um, shortfalls or challenges through a number of product enhancements or features. So I'm just gonna run through, and again, the challenges that I'm highlighting on this page over here are applicable to every single person on this call. Whether you invest with discovery, whether you invest or plan for your retirement via your work, um, the principles that I'm gonna put on screen at the moment are applicable to all of us. So the first one is contributing adequately. Uh, and the point made there, South Africans don't save enough. Uh, if you have a look at the percentage of your salary you save, it is recommended, irrespective of what your salary amount is, um, that you are contributing 15% of your monthly salary um, towards retirement savings. That's in a perfect world. Uh, in reality, if you look at the South African market, um, the majority of individuals are actually only contributing 7%. So less than half the amount they're required to save, um, South Africans are actually saving. Uh, another very interesting stat uh, for any of you who have got pension provident funds through work, um, whether you one day leave work or unfortunately you get retrenched or fired, if you built up a pool of assets in the form of a pension fund or a provident fund, when you leave your current employer, um, every South African has the right to preserve those savings. In other words, um, push those savings into a vehicle which is best geared towards retirement. Alternatively, for South Africans under the age of 55, if you're in either pension or provident fund, you're also entitled to a single 100% withdrawal. Um, I will note that that 100% withdrawal comes with some tax consequences, so just be careful there. Um, but a very, very scary stat is only four in 10 South Africans, only 40% of South Africans who are planning for retirement via their work actually preserve their retirement savings when they leave their employer, which means 60% of South Africans who are utilizing pension provident funds completely destroy any form of retirement planning they've done when they leave their employer. Uh, and the problem created there is if you destroy your retirement savings because you do a withdrawal, um, what, what are you gonna fall back on? Now, there are some South Africans who are financially better off than others, uh, and in most cases, they'll be okay. Uh, but for, I would probably say, 96 to 98% of South Africans, they don't have um, massive wealth to fall back on, which means the only vehicle that they can rely on to provide income in retirement uh, are their retirement annuities, pensions, or provident funds. Um, so a big, big issue in South Africa in the moment in terms of not contributing adequately uh, a very good example is you could go to Shirley, and I encourage you to do so if you haven't already. Um, if you haven't had a chat about your retirement savings, uh, if you don't have an idea in terms of what income you require in retirement, uh, we've got a number of very sophisticated tools 
which can give you a very, very accurate calculation in terms of what you require to save uh, in order to reach to meet uh, a specific retirement goal. And I can tell you in my experience, um, when I've had a sit down with clients who have kind of indicated to me, Mark, I want to earn or receive an income of X amount when I get into retirement, um, you do the calculations for them uh, and it spits out a number in terms of what is the or expected amount you should be contributing. And in most cases, clients can't afford to contribute that amount. Uh, so it's a big, big problem in South Africa in particular. Uh, another challenge um, or, or another issue that needs to be, be, be taken into consideration is performance of fees. Um, now, if you look at our South African equity markets, um, not just this year, but if you look over, for example, the last four years, uh, it has been a very difficult environment to operate in. And as a result, I can tell you from my side of things, you know, I've seen a lot more clients uh, shift their attention away from performance, but rather what are the impact of fees on my investment. If everyone's providing X, I want to be in a vehicle that provides me with the lowest fees. In other words, I can get the best possible net return. Um, so again, a very, very big emphasis uh, on fees. Uh, and from your guys' perspective as a client, uh, how do you mitigate the impact of fees? Unfortunately, fees are always going to be there. Um, no company out there is going to operate free of charge. Um, we need income to keep the doors open. So there are going to be fees. Um, as a client, your primary focus should be looking to find a vehicle um, that minimizes those impact of fees. Uh, and I'll touch on that a little bit later for you. And then lastly, um, and arguably very applicable to anyone who partners with our vitality platform uh, is health and longevity. Uh, if you look uh, at the advancements in medical uh, infrastructure, medicine, uh, health and wellness, um, you know, people are starting to live significantly longer. Um, and those extra years of living need to be accounted for. Uh, if you're a young person on this call right now, um, the reality is you need to start actually changing your mind to accept the fact that the probability of you retiring at age 65 uh, is very, very low. We really see across Europe, for example, a number of countries uh, starting to push back their retirement age. Uh, and it's not done to punish people and make them work for extra years. Uh, it's done to, to recognize the fact that people are now living longer. Uh, and as a result, we need to save more in pre-retirement uh, to ensure we can fund from an income perspective those additional years of living. Uh, and a very interesting table um, our vitality team put together was having a look at current mortality rates across the world. So in other year, so in other words, you know, what is the general age that individuals in these countries would expect to die or live until? Uh, and you can see, I mean, South Africa in 2004, um, quite a low expectation, most South Africans living to the age of 52. Uh, and then dying. Um, obviously, we've, we've, we've grown as a country since then. We've, we've improved our infrastructure, et cetera. So going back to SA in 2014, that mortality rate got pushed back by about five, day, five years to 57. But to have a look at some of the more developed countries over here, USA, life expectancy at 69, Germany, 81, Japan up at 84. Uh, and then very interestingly, what we've done is we had a look at our vitality clients. Um, and had a look at their behavior and, 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 and effectively accurately calculated what their life expectancy is. Uh, and given that Vitality is a wellness program uh, and primarily geared towards positive physical behavior or physical activity, or positive, uh, positive um, behavioral change, you can see, for example, our gold and, vitality, our gold and diamond Vitality clients. Uh, so those are clients who are really engaged with fitness. Uh, it doesn't mean you're going to be running a triathlon every second week. Uh, but even if you're just running religiously around the block every day, uh, something like that, those guys are really starting to see their mortality tables pushed up to 87, um, very close to 90. Now, if you're going to be living significantly longer, as can be illustrated by this graph here, have you adequately planned for those additional years of living? The last thing you want to do is assume you're going to die somewhere around 80. Plan for that from a retirement perspective, only to find out that you actually lived to 90, 95 those additional 15 years of life, who's going to pay for it? Who's going to, who's going to provide you your income? Uh, I can imagine all of you on this call, uh, for those of you who do have kids, um, you know, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where later on in life, your kids are funding your retirement. 
uh, you want to be able to, to sort that out yourself and be financially free when you do get in retirement. So three key challenges facing the South African retirement landscape uh, and ultimately um, impact what we refer to as the retirement adequacy formula. Uh, the retirement adequacy formula are effectively the three key challenges I've just discussed. Um, and ultimately, they impact the ability of an individual uh, to get to the adequate retirement amount. Um, now, just to give you an indication, the uh, desired or ideal retirement placement ratio uh, would sit at roughly 75% of your final salary. Um, so when you retire, there's an expectation that your debt will be paid off. Uh, your monthly expenses, given you won't be working, traveling as much will reduce. So ideally, you want to be replacing around 75% of your income when you retire. Uh, and as I say, those are the three challenges uh, that are ultimately stopping an individual um, from reaching that adequate retirement goal. Um, now, what I'm going to do is run through the retirement annuity vehicle we offer at Discovery. Just talk through four features attached to this vehicle, to this retirement vehicle. Uh, and then at the end, highlights exactly how each of those benefits speaks um, to three of the key challenges facing you um, in terms of your retirement planning. So as highlighted before, um, one of the second impacts from a retirement adequacy perspective is the impact on fees. Now, for those of you who do have a Discovery Life Plan with, us, with Discovery, you have the ability to attach um, a retirement annuity onto that. Uh, and assuming your life plan is in excess of 1,310 Rand, you will qualify for immediate fee reduction. Um, this immediate fee reduction starts at a minimum of 50% and go right up to a 400%, depending on the size of your RA contribution. Uh, and we apply this fee reduction immediately. In other words, the minute the fees are charged, we immediately refund them to you back into your RA account. Um, so you physically won't see your investment dropping by the full charge uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, a very nice benefit as well as it covers uh, platform fees. Um, in other words, your discovery administration, what you pay us to manage your portfolio, advice fees. So it covers all the fees you pay for surely to manage your portfolio. And then lastly, asset management fees. Um, so the actual asset managers who go into the market buy and sell shares on your behalf, um, it discounts their fees as well. Uh, so a fantastic opportunity uh, to reduce the impact of fees, which ultimately gives your fund value the best opportunity um, to grow. For me, this is probably the best feature of, of our retirement annuity product. Um, as I say, fees uh, are a big, big impact at the moment. Um, and this offers you a fantastic ability um, to almost reduce up to 100% um, of all the fees applicable um, to your investment. The second feature, the life plan optimizer. Uh, so again, this product is geared towards individuals who have a discovery life plan. And theoretically or historically speaking, if you look at a, a life or life assurance, um, you know, generally speaking, a lot of individuals spend their entire lives paying for life insurance. Uh, and if they touch, you know, touch word, if nothing happens, they, they hopefully will then have to use that life insurance uh, before they get to age 65. Um, what we've done is we said, you know, what happens to that individual who's effectively spent his whole life paying for this life cover but hasn't really enjoyed any benefits because fortunately for him, uh, he hasn't died or she hasn't died, suffered a, a, a severe illness or disability. Um, so what we did was we, we identified an opportunity to effectively channel that life cover that you haven't used in order to supplement and provide you with tax-free income uh, in retirement. So a fantastic feature. Um, to effectively bridge arguably the biggest issue with retirement planning. Uh, and that's the ability of people not to contribute what is required. Uh, so if you're not contributing what's required, uh, how do you limit or mitigate that shortfall uh, to ensure that when you receive an income, uh, it's an income as per your, 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 your requirements. So a very, very nice feature to utilize unused life cover to effectively fund your income in retirement. In addition, with our discovery life plans, you will qualify for a payback depending on how you structure those life plans. And again, speaking to an individual's ability to contribute more, uh, what we've done is we've allowed the opportunity, should you receive a discovery life payback, that payback will be paid into your bank account as, as, as per the details you provide. Uh, what we'll do is discovery investors in by the following day uh, after you've received that payback, debit your account for that amount, 
uh, and ultimately it will it will it will be considered as an additional contribution. That additional contribution is also um, viewed as a contribution from size perspective. Uh, so one of the primary benefits of retirement planning is a reduction in your tax liability. Um, so that additional payback that you reinvest into your account uh, will also qualify um, for a tax liability reduction. And then the last benefit, um, which is one of the more recent benefits we've added, uh, and it speaks to our entire vitality model. Um, for those clients who are engaged with the vitality model uh, and illustrating really positive behavioral changes, uh, we actually have the ability to take each of your monthly contributions um, and increase them straight off the bat. Uh, so you can see, uh, for example, uh, an individual who had a diamond vitality status was invested with our discovery bank and had a diamond vitality status there would immediately receive an 8% uh, enhancement on their monthly contribution. Uh, so a nice way uh, to again mitigate that shortfall uh, and reward our clients uh, who are engaging on our platform. And for me, a nice thing about looking at wellness, maybe I'm being a little bit biased because I am quite active. Um, if you look at health and wellness, it is trending. In other words, if you look globally, um, the importance of health is, has been identified across the world. A lot of individuals are paying more attention to their physical activity, more attention to eating healthy, more attention to making sure that emotionally and mentally they are as healthy as can be. Um, and we've adopted all those behavioral, uh, behavioral dynamics into our program. Um, the only difference is we can reward clients if they demonstrate that positive behavior. Uh, so a nice opportunity for those of you on the call um, who are individuals who like to engage in programs like this. Again, please speak to Shirley. Um, she's definitely someone who will be able to, to, to help you uh, and walk you through the process of maximizing, maximizing the potential value add. So just to pull the DRO or the RA into, into one big picture, as you can see, what I've done is I've gone back to that requirement adequacy formula. And what I've done is I've just highlighted how um, certain benefits that I've just discussed um, can effectively add uh, to each of the key features or each of the key challenges that currently face you uh, as South African investors. So in terms of contributing adequately, I highlighted the fact that you have the ability to convert unused life cover uh, into tax-free income. Uh, in addition to that, the ability to reinvest the paybacks you receive from your discovery life plan uh, and actually get those doubled at retirement. Uh, in terms of maximizing performance after fees, uh, I've highlighted that dependent on the size of your DRO contribution, you can qualify for an immediate fee reduction up to 100%, um, which in certain cases can actually translate into negative EACs. Um, the EAC is just a costing table that all of you will see uh, on any new business quote from an investment perspective, whether you're at Discovery, Alan Gray, anywhere else, um, EAC is part and parcel of quoting. Uh, and then lastly, as I say, catering for health and longevity, uh, which as you can see, as I showed through the slide earlier on our vitality model, is very, very applicable to our Discovery clients. Uh, and what we're doing there to support those individuals who are engaging with our health program uh, and improving their health, we can give contribution boosts uh, for living well, I showed you that table earlier, depending on how you engage in our program, your monthly contribution can actually be enhanced. Uh, in retirement, we actually boost your income uh, if you draw down responsibly. Uh, and as you start getting later on in life, uh, where ill health becomes a slightly larger concern, uh, we also have the ability to enhance the income received. Uh, and all of this uh, is underpinned by state-of-the-art state of retirement uh, and longevity modeling. Uh, so right now, if, if, you, if, you, if you haven't already opened up an RA, uh, you can have a chat to the like of Shirley. She'll be able to, based on your concerns, based on your requirements, pinpoint exactly how much you should be contributing. Uh, in addition to that, we can take into consideration, for example, um, what is your health like? What is your physical activity like? And effectively provide longevity modeling for you as well. Um, so the ability to take into consideration your own health uh, and make sure that if you are, as an individual or as a family, um, really putting a lot of emphasis on making sure that your behavior is, 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 is modern and, and healthy and forward looking, um, that we make sure that we adequately plan for you uh, when it comes to retirement planning. Um, so again, that concludes the DRO section. Uh, just touching on one of the product features, which I think speaks to a, a fundamental investment principle, which all of us have to, um, 
we must have to effectively partake in, uh, and that is retirement planning. Um, the last section of my presentation before I open up the floor to, to some questions is, as I highlighted earlier, um, you know, the South African market, much as this year, but over the last couple of years from an equity perspective, hasn't always provided the best returns. We've had a couple of problems, both locally and some global problems in the likes of Brexit and trade wars. Um, but equity markets have been quite constrained in the South African market for some time. Um, and what we've recently done, uh, for those of you that don't know, about three weeks ago, uh, we had our discovery day where we did product launches across every single product that we had. Uh, and from an investment perspective, what we brought to market was a complete revamp of our Discovery Invest International offering. Uh, and I just wanted to perhaps touch base with you, with you guys quickly for about five minutes uh, and just provide you with a quick illustration in terms of what we've done uh, and the potential opportunity for you guys as clients uh, to get your money out of South Africa overseas uh, and exposed to certain uh, markets and assets that you ordinarily as a South African uh, investor would not gain access to. Uh, so firstly, just to paint the picture in terms of why you as an investor would want to go overseas, um, you know, why not just stay in South Africa and expose yourself to the local market? Uh, so firstly, if we look at it from a currency perspective, the RAND is arguably the most volatile currency in the world. Uh, so getting out of that volatile currency uh, and providing hard currency exposure to developed markets uh, such as the US dollar, uh, European Euro, uh, Euro uh, and British pound, uh, access to opportunities. Uh, if you look at the South African market as a whole, it represents less than 1% of global markets. So in theory, if you as an investor are only investing here in South Africa, you're missing out on 99% of the uh, that exists worldwide. A very good example right there is, uh, if you look at the platform that we're currently having this conversation on Zoom, um, prior to lockdown, Zoom was relatively unknown to, to, to the world uh, off the back of lockdown or where we are right now. Um, pretty much been adopted worldwide by most corporates. I was actually on a call earlier this morning where they were talking about Zoom. Uh, end of December, so 31 December 2019, uh, Zoom had about 30 million uh, registered users. Uh, so quite a, quite a decent number of users. Um, by the end of April this year, so four months later, uh, the number of user, you know, users had increased 30 times. Um, Zoom currently now support roughly around 300 million users. So phenomenal growth achieved in the space of four months, growth that as a South African investor, you're potentially missing out on. Uh, lastly, geographical diversification. Uh, so again, if you look at geography, is uh, an area which is starting to show a lot of potential um, from a forward-looking perspective uh, is the Asia Pacific region. Uh, getting into markets like Indonesia, Thailand, South Korea, uh, really so showing some phenomenal GDP growth uh, relative to, for example, South Africa, um, which is hovering around 1%, uh, if not a little bit lower than that. Uh, so three rationale why you as an investor, why you on this call uh, would want to take your money offshore. We've also partnered with some phenomenal asset managers here, really giving our clients access to some of the best asset managers in the world. Uh, so we've got our Discovery Global portfolios, uh, which are managed by BlackRock. Uh, BlackRock is the largest asset manager in the world, uh, currently managing in excess of uh, 6 trillion US dollars. 13,000 investment professionals worldwide uh, located in excess of 30 countries. Um, and they really are touch on the portfolio as they, we're going to be offering there. And then a first of a kind for South African investors, uh, for those of you who, who want access to offshore share portfolios, we've partnered with Goldman Sachs in New York, uh, and they're giving us access to their share portfolios. Uh, and really for the first time as a South African investor, you can now go to Goldman Sachs in the US uh, and invest directly into their offshore share portfolios. Uh, one in particular I'm very excited about, which I'll touch on just now. And then lastly, uh, a whole host of other funds. So the BlackRock and the Asset and the Goldman Sachs are, are quite um, um, niche or, or direct investments. Um, but if you as an investor, for example, wanted to target a very specific asset class uh, in a very specific geography, um, we've got a whole host of funds uh, available on our platform uh, to provide that kind of service. So just to identify the BlackRock portfolios, uh, we provided three of them. Um, they're a combination of both passive and active managers. So your passive, for example, it just tracks a certain index, very, very low cost, uh, versus your active manager where physically there's an asset manager buying and selling shares. So really just to give you a, a blend of both worlds, 
Um, and as I say, depending on what type of investor you are, whether you're an aggressive investor who's, who's looking to target um, equity market growth, or whether you're a conservative investor looking to protect what capital you've generated to date, uh, a nice suite of, of funds available to you to select from. Uh, and then as I highlighted earlier, we've got three share portfolios being offered by um, Goldman Sachs. Uh, and the one that I wanted to highlight in particular was this middle one, uh, the Discovery Global Millennial Share, uh, which I think is going to provide um, very nice exposure. The underlying fund structure of the share portfolio is going to be effectively stocks that service millennials only. Uh, so in other words, your tech companies. Uh, I mean, if you think of some of the biggest companies that have emerged in America over the last 10 years, uh, I'm talking Amazon, Facebook, Google, um, they're all tech companies. Uh, and while you can indirectly expose yourself to these companies on a local platform, uh, if you want to physically buy into these companies, uh, you're going to have to open up a share portfolio. Uh, and as I say, very excited uh, to now be offering that service on our platform. Um, and then lastly, um, we are offering a structured note. This is a limited um, opportunity. It's a special note we release from time to time. Uh, so if you are effectively sitting on some money that you'd like to take offshore at the moment, um, this structured note gives you a fantastic opportunity uh, to gain access to a blend of 20 European and US stocks. There's an example of some of the stocks we're looking at. Um, it's offered in our Discovery Global Endowment, uh, which is a five-year product. Uh, at the end of the five-year product or the five-year term, we'll have a look at that basket of funds and if the basket of fund is anywhere between 0.1 percent or 50 percent that client will immediately earn a 50 percent return uh, in us dollars before fees and taxes um, so to give you an example client goes to invest today um, at the end of the five-year period his portfolio is grown by 30 percent that client will immediately receive a 50 percent return in us dollars if, for example, as I highlighted earlier, markets have dropped quite a bit recently, uh, and as a result, there is the potential for them to increase in value significantly over the next couple of years. Um, so if, for example, the client gets a 60% return, he will not only qualify for that initial 50%, will give that client an additional 50%. In other words, he will receive 100% return uh, gross in US dollars. Uh, so for those of you who are bringing your money back to South Africa after that, um, there will also most likely be an additional layer of return, uh, given that the RAND will most likely depreciate against the dollar uh, over a five-year period. So a unique opportunity, it's limited time available. So if you guys are interested in either this product or our offshore platform, uh, I would strongly recommend you get in contact with Shirley. Um, you know, I've touched base with Shirley regarding offshore, um, and, 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 and she can definitely facilitate um, any requests you guys have from a new business perspective, um, I'm actually here um, to support Shirley. So uh, if she has any issues, et cetera, that is required, um, I'm more than happy to step in and provide some support. Um, with that being said, guys, that concludes my presentation tonight. Um, just to quickly maybe summarize, we ran through a couple of the impacts of COVID-19, the importance of staying investors, invested despite the fact that equity markets have dropped off slightly. Um, as I said, if you've got any concerns around that, um, that's the power of having a financial advisor. You have someone to turn to, someone to lean against and provide a little bit of support. Uh, we then had a look at the three challenges facing the retirement landscape, a landscape that all of you in your own individual or family capacity will have to look at at some point in time in your life. Uh, and again, I recommend you get in contact with Shirley, uh, who can provide support and guidance in terms uh, of what you should be contributing. Uh, maybe you can only contribute X amount, um, and Shirley, over the couple of years, will work with you, identify opportunities where you can increase your disposable income uh, and contribute more towards your retirement. We then had a look at the DRO and some of the features of that DRO or retirement annuity, uh, which speaks to the challenges facing the retirement landscape. Uh, and then lastly, uh, I just gave you guys a little bit of a, a, a teaser or a taster uh, in terms of some of the adjustments we've made uh, on our offshore platform. And again, uh, if any of you are interested uh, in exposing your money to, 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 to the markets outside of South Africa, again, I would strongly recommend getting in touch with Shirley, uh, who can facilitate that process for you. Um, from my side, that is it. Thank you once again for attending this evening's session. Um, I'll now hand back over to Shirley 
uh, and facilitate some question and answers. Thank you. Ah, yes, thanks very much, Mark, for uh, an absolutely interesting, um, concise presentation taking us through the markets, which is an extremely complex field. Um, and um, I must admit that you did it very um, simply and easily bringing it into, into layman's terms. But I think for the rest, so thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. That was really brilliant, uh, and we really do appreciate that. But I think to the rest of the, the, the listeners, the... Um, there might have been a lot of complex issues that, we're, that he spoke of, and um, term might not know, bull and bear, and um, all sorts of terminology. And the idea is not to scare you off, but to actually start to familiarize yourself with it, with the assistance of a financial advisor. And I think um, a way that it was put very nicely is that a financial advisor is almost a translator, giving you access to um, your... Um, the financial markets, how and where and what you can and could be doing so that, um, you know, you can actually make some sense of it and, and make it a little bit simpler. So, but thank you very much, Mark. You did a really great job there. And um, there have been a few questions that have been coming through and I thought I'd just um, go through some of them. They've come through on a private space and we'll open it up and let Tammy and Mark um, answer them. First one that came in, um, actually that came in on the public chat which I think was put very nicely. Um, it came in from Turby and, and Jess, and it was, um, I've heard that we should be um, investing as much as we possibly can into an RA while we're young. Is that true? Tammy answered, Mark, what's your perception? How would you answer that question? Yeah, so I'm, I mean, I'm having a look at Tammy's response here, and, and I think she's 100% correct. So Tammy's response was, the younger you start, the better, and if you can afford it younger, then yes, it is better to essentially you receive growth over a long period of time. Um, so the concept Tam's referring to there is uh, uh, what's often referred to as the seventh wonder of the world, which is uh, compound growth. Um, so as a youngster, um, if you can start contributing earlier to your retirement annuity um, and you can contribute at a higher level, what it ultimately results in is the earlier you contribute, the longer those contributions have to generate growth. Um, and compound growth uh, at a very basic level is growth on growth. Um, so if you, for example, have 100,000 Rand invested into the market for 10 years, at the end of one year, whatever growth you achieve is reinvested and it gets to benefit from another nine years of growth. So from an RA perspective, the quicker you can start contributing and developing that asset base, um, you know, the longer that asset base has to enjoy um, growing in the markets. And I mean, retirement planning can be, I don't know everyone's um, age, et cetera, on this call, but I did see a couple of videos before before guys uh, decided to turn their videos off. And there were some guys and girls of a young age on this call. Uh, and you know, for, 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 for you guys, you might be planning for your retirement for, for in excess of 30 years. Um, so the quicker that you can start developing that retirement or asset base now, um, you know, the less you're gonna to have to do or stress about it later on in life. I can tell you, I've dealt with a lot of clients who are 50, 55 and are only waking up to the idea of retirement planning. It's a very, very difficult conversation to have. And irrespective of how good you are as a financial advisor, in most cases, it's not enough time to plan adequately. You don't have, 15 years is a very short time to plan for retirement. Whereas I've spoken to a lot of younger clients who are even not necessarily contributing massive amounts, they're contributing what they can, but they're starting at a very, very young age, um, which means by the time they're 30, 35, 40, they've already got quite a nice pool of assets who've enjoyed a couple of years of growth and still have, <clears throat> excuse me, potentially another 20 years of growth. Uh, so to totally ingest, to answer your question directly, um, if you have been advised, then I would listen. That advice is 100% correct. The more you can contribute and the earlier you can contribute, ultimately the less pressure it puts on you later in life. I've also seen a number of examples where, um, you know, individuals save early on in their life and then they can actually stop contributing later on because uh, they've done all the hard work already. Whereas an individual who starts later on in life is effectively um, always going to be on the back foot. It's very difficult for them uh, to catch up on compound growth. The only way to catch up on compound growth is to contribute significantly uh, large sums of money, uh, which is not always possible. Thanks, Mark. Um, I think at this stage, Mark has spent a lot of time saying speak to Shirley. 
I have with me um, on the group one of my colleagues, and I think at this stage um, I'm going to ask her to switch on her video. Yolanda, um, so we can see she is a, one of my colleagues in my team um, and a very well-respected, esteemed financial advisor in her own right, doing her finalizing all of her credentials to get into the, into the financial advising world and um, working very closely with our team. So Yolanda, welcome on the call as well. And um, yeah, good to have you and good to have some of your clients on the, on the, um, on the presentation. So yeah, for those of you who work with Yolanda, um, the advice goes just the same. There is no difference. And I think um, when you're speaking to advisors from Discovery, you'll find that we do speak a very similar language. So welcome, Yolanda. And um, maybe you'd like to answer the next question, um, Yolanda. My job gives me some savings for retirement. Is this enough? Um, thank you, Shirley, for the opportunity. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect. Um, I'd much rather have Tammy answer that, but no, I don't think... Um, <laughs> <laughs> My advice would be that uh, it's ever enough. We need to look at each individual and at their specific needs, and then we can do a risk calculation and see um, what advice is available for each individual's needs. Um, so that would be what I would say to each one in front of me. Mm. Tammy, would you like to elaborate on that, seeing as though she threw you under the bus? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's quite so nice. <laughs> Look, generally, I mean, traditionally when we look out at the world and if you're contributing to a your employer scheme, the chances are you're not saving enough. It doesn't matter how you do it, what you do it, it's most definitely not enough. And the reality is what, what tends to also help hamper it, I almost want to say, is that when you're contributing to a scheme, is you're also limited to fund choices. It's normally a default choice. You're limited to three or four, maybe maximum five, because that's how employee benefits work. You don't have the vast access. And whatever those funds are, they're normally life stage funds. It's nothing against it. It's going to him, um, hinder some of that performance. You have to have an alternative on the side, personal, where you get to choose the funds. You have more control over it as well. That's, what I, that's my two cents worth. <laughs> Perhaps also to elaborate on it, and Mark touched on it in terms of the COVID. We have massive companies that are going through financial difficulties, are trying to find ways to, to try and make things happen. So one thing that is a best kept secret in the, in the retirement space, particularly on big, big organizations, is that you'll have what we have, your cost of company, your income that you live according to. Um, and then we've heard that um, we have what we call a retirement funding income. And in most cases, your retirement funding income is lower than your cost to company. And as a result, the contribution typically is on your retirement funding income, which is then even less going into your pot for when you do retire. So um, I think in answer to that question, it's very important that you do the numbers. Not all employers do that. A lot of employers um, pay the right amount and contribute with your, your own contribution. Know your numbers. What should you have? How much have you got currently? And how, what is your shortfall? And how best can you, you look at, at getting that shortfall met in the shortest period of time? Um, and I think one of the questions that I, I, I took a little bit of a giggle at was, how do I ensure a good retirement? Well, that answer is very simple. Make sure you have lots and lots of money so you can go and do all those weird and wonderful things that you want to do now but can't do because you're working and uh, make sure that there's the cash and then look after your health with vitality so that you can enjoy it in those golden years and, and, and the money that's there. Um, but I think on that note, I'm going to um, take the opportunity to thank our speakers. Thank you very much, Mark. I um, really do appreciate the time and the effort that you put in to share that valuable knowledge to us and with us. Um, and I think in short, the answer is to know what you need. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid of all of the lingo that you've heard today. Don't be afraid of the numbers. Um, if you start and you start with something that you can afford and you make a conscious effort of just increasing that whenever you can, you're on the right path. And I think that's the most important thing. 
um, that we would like to share with you this afternoon. So um, on that note, I'd like to say thank you very, very much. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Mark, um, Yolanda. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And uh, yeah, good luck for this cold weekend. Um, it looks like it's going to be rather chilly. So um, a good bottle of red wine, hopefully, and um, do the maths. If you need to, please pop us an email. Let us know the questions you have, and we'll be glad to answer them from the panel that's there. Thank you very, very much, and uh, good evening to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys.